Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. I want to welcome you and welcome everyone to our Juneteenth flag raising, the second annual Juneteenth flag raising in Beverly, Massachusetts. Thank you so much for um, to, to all of you for showing up. I'm gonna start off as the first speaker. My name is Nicole McLean. I am the president and founder of North Shore Juneteenth Association. And we've been in existence since 2017, uh, spreading awareness about the Juneteenth holiday, highlighting black American culture and achievement, and helping to dismantle racism using our programming and our events as a tool for change. Juneteenth has been celebrated annually on June 19th in various parts of the United States since 1867. The day was recognized as a federal holiday on June 17th, 2021, when President Joseph Biden signed the Juneteenth National Independence Day Act into law. This holiday commemorates the two-year delay enslaved black women, children, and men experienced in Galveston, Texas. When General Gordon Granger rode into Galveston, Texas, he announced General Order Number 3. General Order Number 3 states, the people of Texas are informed that in accordance with a proclamation from the executive of the United States, all slaves are free. This involves an absolute equality of personal rights and rights of property between former masters and slaves. And the connection heretofore existing between them becomes that of employer and hired labor. The freedmen are advised to remain quietly at their present homes and work for wages. They are informed that they will not be allowed to collect at military posts and they will not be supported in idleness either there or elsewhere. While the order was critical in expanding freedom to enslaved people, stating this involves an absolute equality of personal rights, the racist language used in the last sentences foreshadowed that the rights, that the fight for equality would continue before this order, slave owners in Mississippi, Louisiana, and other points east had been migrating to Texas to escape the Union Army's reach. And in hurried reenactment of the original Middle Passage, more than 150,000 slaves were forced to make the trip to Texas. After this order was given in 1865, it still took an additional two full years before enslaved black Americans were able to celebrate Juneteenth. The first celebration happened in 1867. Former slave owners continued to enforce their power over the freedmen and women, killing black families, oppressing black men, women, and children, and cruelly punishing them in every way imaginable. 250,000 black Americans were enslaved in various parts of the country. Oh, I'm sorry about that. 250,000 black Americans that were enslaved in various parts of the country were being held in Galveston, Texas, which is why Juneteenth is celebrated all over the United States and not exclusively in Texas. The acknowledgement of Juneteenth as a federal holiday was a long fought battle. The fight did not begin last year. The fight has received attention and the events of 2020 allowed change makers to grant black people one request. The National Juneteenth Observance Foundation has been pushing for this to happen for years. Opal Lee is recognized as the grandmother of Juneteenth. Opal Lee campaigned for decades to make Juneteenth a national holiday. She promoted this by organizing 2.5 mile walks each year. At the age of 89, she conducted a symbolic walk from Fort Worth, Texas to Washington, DC. She began the walk in September of 2006 and arrived in Washington in January of 2017. She hoped to plead the case for a federal holiday directly to President Barack Obama. She also organized a petition that received 1.6 million signatures. She said, and I quote, it's going to be a, a national holiday. I have no doubt about it. My point is, let's make it a holiday in my lifetime. 
Ms. Opal stood alongside President Biden during the historic occasion and received the pen he used to sign off on the law, making Juneteenth a national holiday. While we rejoice during this ceremony, we understand there is still work to be done to end systemic racism and to change the hearts and minds of people when it comes to what black Americans represent and who we are. Ain't I a Woman is a quote by Sojourner Truth, formerly enslaved woman and suffragette. I am a man is a declaration of civil rights movement. Both are historical statements that sum up the reason to continue the fight for equity. Banning the teaching of the full history of America in schools, refusing to reimagine policing, refusing to acknowledge the systems of oppression that plague every area of our society, and blocking reparations legislation does not honor this holiday. Those actions let us know that while we have come very far, we, we still have far to go. Juneteenth represents hope and resilience. Created by Ben Haith in 1997, the design of the Juneteenth flag depicts a bursting new star on the horizon. The star represents a freedom and a new hope for the future. The red, white, and blue colors are used to show that enslaved black Americans and their, and their descendants are part of America and American history. Juneteenth is the oldest known celebration of black American freedom. Upon being told of their freedom, black people began to build a life for themselves in America, although their freedom was unsupported. They began to reunite forcefully separated families and make decisions for themselves, doing so despite having nowhere to go or any financial foundation from which to start. Celebrate Juneteenth by acknowledging how far we have come, but continue to educate yourself so that you can be so that you can be a part of achieving a more equitable world. As I said, North Shore Juneteenth Association is honored to share this holiday with you, and I want to wish you all a happy Juneteenth. Thank you. At this time, I want to invite um, our, the mayor of Beverly, Michael Cahill, to speak. Thank you, Nicole. It's great to see everybody here this afternoon. Could I just take a minute to introduce our local elected officials? And I'm going to need your help. If you just raise your hands, I'll go right around. We've got uh, one of our city councilors at large, Brendan Sweeney. Thank you, Brendan. Uh, Ward 6 School Committee member, Lorinda Visnick. City Councilor at Large, Hannah Bowen. School Committee President and Ward 1 member, Rachel Abel. City Councilor at Large and City Council President, Julie Flowers. Ward 2 City Councilor, Estelle Rand, who I think is speaking after me. So you hear from her in a minute. Um, our other local, I'm not missing anybody. Um, Matt Cubitas, who's, who's here from Senator Joan Lovely's office because the state Senate is in session right now. And I know that's why uh, Representative Paracella is also in Boston and right here. Thank you both. Um, and then our Human Rights Committee is here. Were you going to announce them, Councilor Rand? You, you got them? So Human Rights Committee, it's great to see so many of you. Councilor Rand will get you in a minute. Um, we also have our um, second state Senate district Democratic State Committee woman, that's a long time. Right. Our local Democratic State Committee woman, Julie Curtis. Thank you, Julie. Um, and, and so thank you all. And, and listen, um, I'm grateful. Nicole, thank you for all that you shared. Um, and I, I just I want to say, look, by celebrating Juneteenth, we first have to face and acknowledge the awful shame in America that was slavery. Uh, and, and, and yet, we need to do that so that we can celebrate the end of slavery the freedom of black Americans, and all the amazing uh, talent, intellect, joy, contribution that has come, that has happened in this country for so many hundreds of years from black Americans. So I, I, I want to be sure to acknowledge that. And Nicole's right. There's a whole lot of work to do to dismantle systemic racism. Uh, I'm, I'm appreciative of all the people in Beverly who work on that day in and day out. And we will continue to partner to try to make 
big progress and move things forward in Beverly. It's, that's, that's one of our most important obligations and responsibilities as a community. So that said, thank you all for being here to celebrate. And let me turn it right over to Councillor Rand. We're back to you, Nicole. Councillor Rand, thank you. Thank you so much, Mayor Cahill. Um, let's see, so I'm Estelle Rand. I'm the city councilor for downtown, which we are lucky enough to stand in right now. Um, it's my pleasure to be here. Thank you for asking me to speak today. Uh, first, I want everyone to please join me in giving a shout out to all of the young people who are here. Please. Woo. I, my hope is that um, the young people here know that you are loved in this community and um, just the way you are, exactly how you are, we love you. And this, is, this community is here for you to dream with. So please keep doing that and thank you for showing up. That really means a lot. Um, I also want to thank Nicole McLean for founding the North Shore Juneteenth Association. I want to thank all of the board members and volunteers who work to uphold the, the association's mission. So far, I've counted 11 Juneteenth flag raising ceremonies in the North Shore. Um, and that's in just a few short years, that accomplishment. And I just want to share that I, I know that that work is just huge and so beautiful. So thank you for that. Thank you. Um, so really, I'm, I'm here to share my gratitude, and I'm here to join you in celebrating freedom. Um, and I'm also here to share my commitment to dismantling racism and moving forward every day. So thank you. Oh, yeah. And also, school superintendent um, Dr. Trocek is here as well, and Dr. Andre Morgan is also here in the back, so it's nice to see our schools well represented. I'm going to introduce Keisha. And uh, I guess I'm going to leave the Human Rights Committee introductions up to Keisha, I think. Yeah, she'll know better. And um, speaking of that, I believe Keisha is coming up next. Hold on. I lost my place here. Thank you, Keisha, for all you do. Um, my name is Keisha Johnson, and I'm the chairperson here at the Human Rights Committee. Uh, I just wanted to say how grateful I am to be here today, uh, not only as chairperson, but as a black American here. Um, I have here uh, Paul Goodwin, who's uh, the co-chair. I don't know what we would do without you, Paul. <laughs> um, um, and we have uh, Mindy DiPolito, am I saying it right, who is also a member of the Human Rights Committee. Thank you, Mindy. Um, and to my left here, I have Leah Jones, um, who is also a member of the Human Rights Committee, does wonderful things. Um, and so as we gather here today, um, I want us to, to think about um, not only hopelessness that was felt on this day by all the families and friends and our ancestors that were awaiting word um, in Texas, but I want us to think about their strength and their courage. Um, and I want us to also uh, remember uh, that we still do have work to do. Um, and so I'm grateful that the city of Beverly is committed to, to doing the, the good hard work uh, that needs to be done um, and that we know can only be done if we do it together. So thank you for gathering here. Thank you so much, Keja. I just wanted to add that um, the Beverly Human Rights Committee is really here for everyone. We're here to amplify, lift up voices, and if you, you're really part of the Human Rights Committee, even though there are 10 or 11 members. And I just wanted to thank Nicole McLean and North Shore Juneteenth for reminding us that we are all one North Shore and for inviting us here with our children to make this a part of Beverly's culture 
and we feel really proud to be here at something that represents what we want to be. So thank you so much for this. Thank you. So I just want to quickly add that we're here to help. And if we can't help, we can definitely try to put you in contact with the city resources that can. So you can find our contact information on the city website or beverlyhumanrights.org. So please reach out if you need anything. Thank you. Okay, and now we're going to move on to a special performance of poetry by Big Brother Saadi. The flag going to be going up in a little bit, right? Yes. All right. So I'm going to pledge to the flag while it's still there. Y'all seen that done before? You never seen that done in school, right? The flag's still down and somebody pledging for it. You never seen that, right? Well, it goes down a little different. See, they got you putting a hand on your chest, right? Now we're going to put a fist in the air this time, right? Y'all ready? All right, that's for you to do. I'll put mine down. <laughs> Keep it up. I won't put it down. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the movement and the culture for which it stands. Scientifically drop bombs and blow the mind on which the land. Kingdom of God for the poor. And as far as the richest man, we know the time. He need to watch imported from Switzerland. Once raw, now watered down. But after the flip Michigan crisis, you need to hit your men up like dogs. We're switching plans. One nation under one God, one love and one blood. Who won blood? Tell them to get it together. We are one God. Around the circle, we're standing at square. We are on God. It's either sweat, weep, bowl, bleed for the people. That is on dogs. I mean, this is deeper than your underground. It's bigger than pop. It's bigger than hip hop. It's bigger than big, it's bigger than Pac. It's rebel music, getting you ready for revolution. Ghetto music for ghetto movement. Come on, let's get it moving. Each and every single one of us should be teaching, reaching out, stay active and practice what you're preaching. Y'all hearing this rhyme like, damn, that's one furious Monday, brother. Taking serious measures for serious time, regardless if you are the hottest artist. Status of a superstar is irrelevant. I'm telling them, this is way more than four elements. It's grown man rap music teaching the youth. This is more than just speaking what's true. This is speaking the truth. I mean, what's liberty without freedom? All are following by who's leading. Once study the words, then why read them? We in a equal distance from the center. We're standing the quality. Wise and civilized, those are the qualities. United, they stand by dividing us so we fall. There is no peace without equal rights and justice for all. Fist down now. Before you pledge such, you know, you see it, you gotta make sure you look around a little bit then. You cannot play with you. Do it! All right. How did the peace and Everett earlier? I'm gonna do something different. This is Beverly. How y'all doing today? Okay. Um, wait. Oh. I can go on there, right? Good. So, Big Brother Sadi, that's what they call me, of course. Big Brother Saudi God body, not the complex or the syndrome, just the godly complexion with the heavenly skin tone. No preaching to the choir. I'm fire and brimstones on this eternity journey. Life's what I bring home is God's call. Singing the ringtone prophecy from the east. I'm the beast that put the crown on the king's dome. I think I'm going to go with a different piece right now. <laughs> I'm a beast, the man, the king, a priest, and a god. I battle the beast, that's holy war slash priest of the gods. Taking it back to the east where it starts. Meanwhile, wild in the west. 
My brother just said, easy no star, look. Towards the eastern star, see where I'm going with that. Once was deceived to believe without knowing the facts, then learn and the wise to believe without knowing, in fact, knowledge the found way, the groundation, we're growing on that. I rank higher in the army that strike down the entire empire of empires with brimstones and fire, lock, load, and fire, be brother, the godly truth. And the goddamn liar, yeah, he's good. I play west and the clean is one, the west was one. Babylon fell right where he stood. He or she loses. Once the G rap, it was street blues. Four corner stones around my building block, that's priesthood. Cause my people are perishing for the lack of knowledge. No understanding of self and just got back from college. A brother tried to break free, so I went for his masters. Came back to the plantation, another slave for the master. If you're gonna get that green, you're gonna work the past. There ain't no father in the sky. The truth gonna hurt these bastards. Funny how things change. Picture before and after. It's not a laugh, no joke, it matter, but worth the laughter. Yeah, I heard your pastor say with a false prophet. He wins your souls and goes in your pocket for a profit. It's a cold world. He's heading for the tropics. Having a ball probably gets silenced before it drops it. Got conventional wisdom, but look at these fools. Hell is hot, only live in the cold world to be fool. Trapped inside the belly, you beast fool. Your preacher man can preach good. That's preschool. This is priesthood. Heights. So in this portion of the program, Beverly Public Schools and students will be um, speaking to the crowd. Um, we're going to start off with Dr. Susan Charichuk, Superintendent of Beverly Public Schools. Good afternoon. Um, as a school community, it's really important to give our students the academic tools to be competitive in a future society. But it's also critical to help them develop a moral compass so they can stand up to address the inequities that they witness and experience so as to help people who aren't free. I think about the celebration of Juneteenth because this day correlates with a moral compass. It is a time to pause and remember, to reflect and to celebrate freedom, black culture and tradition, and to recommit ourselves to preserving freedom for all people. Although this day is specific to the black experience in this country, this day should be celebrated by all races, backgrounds and experiences, because the end of slavery was a moral milestone and a victory for all of humanity. Both those who endured slavery and those who worked to end it remind us of the capacity of humanity, both in its resilience in the face of evil and its resolve to overcome it. Those who risked their lives and gave their lives in pursuit of black freedom weren't only black. Juneteenth is the combination of June and 19th and was not the actual day President Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation ordered the rebel Confederate States of America to free their enslaved on September 22, 1862. However, we can all imagine that after hearing the news, black people were shocked, afraid, angry, jubilant, or a combination of all of those feelings. Great gains have been made in the pursuit of freedom because, countless, because of the countless sacrifices of black and white people whose faces and names are unknown to us and who endured the atrocious indignities and horrors. The fight for full, full freedom continues today. If you need any evidence of that freedom being threatened, all you need to do is turn on the television and listen to the ways voting rights are being threatened and undermined each day. You need only to look at the unemployment rates in communities of color or about how racial and ethnic disparities continue to, continue to move and the continued growth of the racial wealth gap. We here are fighting each day against injustices in our society. The struggle continues and so must the fight for full freedom. And that's why it is so important in our schools to continue the work around developing a moral compass with our students. 
Um, I'm really honored to be here today and speak with you. I have the uh, honor of, rep of uh, introducing you to our student speakers who are here today. We have Claire Patch and Elodie LaPointe who are here to share some of their thoughts with you. So I'm going to welcome them up to give their words. Hi, I'm Claire Patch. Um, so we were asked yesterday to share some words about what we feel about the black, black experience. So this is just what I came up with. Um, in 1865, when slavery was abolished, there were around 4 million enslaved people. And while the Emancipation Proclamation did free these people, I think it is important to discuss what happened after they were freed. There are two main topics I want to examine. First is the prison system. At face value, most people assume that while prison doesn't sound appealing, it isn't a lesser form of slavery. The modern prison system in the US was formed to carry on what slavery started. The statistics are jarring. One in 81 black adults are serving time in a state prison. In Alabama, Delaware, Georgia, Illinois, Louisiana, Maryland, Michigan, Mississippi, New Jersey, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Virginia, more than half of the prison population is black. And black Americans are incarcerated five times as much as white Americans. This makes it clear that abolishing slavery didn't abolish systemic oppression, it just hid it. On top of this, it is important to understand how black people are held back from opportunities that white people are given. This starts back after the first Juneteenth when formerly enslaved people needed things like jobs, which they weren't given, and housing, which they were giving the worst of. This set black Americans back as they were now poorer than their thriving white neighbors. These things are significant as they still affect black people's lives now. Poverty is 16 times higher among black Americans for the last three generations. And in my personal experience, it is evident that black students don't get the same confidence to excel in school as white students do. This stems from the system giving opportunities to white people before black people. With this in mind, we must continue to celebrate the achievements of black people, buy up black owned businesses, and support black kids to follow their dreams. Thank you. Hi, my name is Elodie LaPointe, and I decided to elucidate on the black experience through a little poem that I wrote. Uh, it's something quick that I made before coming here. What does it mean to be black? What does it mean to be creativity incarnated? To be the perfect design? To be the impregnable foreman? Blackness is not indicative of misconstrued narratives. Violence finds no solitude here. Blackness is not a chronicle of maltreatment. It is the purposeful expression of self and the rejection of intimidation. It is anything you can do, I can do best. I do with ease. I do because I can. Being black is the unsolicited manifestation of art, of a struggle to undeniable triumph. Black is the integration of all things authentic, all things beauty. Being black is being alive, the consciousness of the passion. Being black is being liberated, celebration and truth. Being black is being undisputably aware of community, seeing family in all kinfolk, seeing family in ourselves. Blackness is love. A love so impenetrable, so raw. This is what blackness is and what it will continue to be. Thank you. That was awesome. Was that awesome? Come on, another round of applause for our future leaders here. This is amazing. I love, love that. Thank you both, Elodie and 
Claire, thank you so much. That was amazing. Oh, now we're moving on to the Black National Anthem and the raising of the Juneteenth flag. So can I please invite Tanya Crowell to sing the Black National Anthem. Lift every voice and sing Till earth and heaven ring Ring with the harmonies Of liberty Let our rejoicing Let it resound loud as the rolling seas. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of a new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. Stony the road we trod, bitter the chastening rod, felt in the day that hope unborn had died, yet with a steady beat, have not a weary feet, Come to a place on which our Father sighed. We have come over a way with the tears that have watered. We have come treading a path through the blood of the slaughtered. Out from the gloomy past Till we now stand at last Where the white gleam of a bright star is cast
Wonderful. So this does conclude the ceremony, but I want to make sure everyone knows that um, there's going to be a showing of Miss Juneteenth at the Cabot Theater at 6.30 p.m. tonight. So if you're interested in watching that movie, which also will elaborate on this ceremony, I invite you to go to the Cabot Theater tonight at 6.30 um, p.m. to uh, enjoy Miss Juneteenth. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming, and happy Juneteenth.